strongman champion. Inherently, we all die. And when you die, I believe the same thing happens as before you were born, which your, your consciousness just ceases to exist. And all you leave behind are the people you impact, your family, and any lives you're, you're lucky to change along the way. And so where does it stop? It, it really doesn't. It starts with providing an option for family, providing an option for my community, providing an option for my province, my country. There's really no end to which, uh, to which this stops. And there's very few people who can extend their relevance past being a strongman. And I think it takes a substantial amount of effort to leave a lasting impact and be able to have lasting influence on people. And my goal is that everyone who watches my content, they, they, can, they can pull various things from it. One of those things being, here's how to stay healthy while you're exercising. Sure, I put that in the context of strongman, but you can apply that to exercise in general. What do you think about Vicious Rise and Strong? I think that it's very unexpected. So obviously he talks a lot about how, you know, he ran marathons, he's good at golf, all these things, but I don't think he really anticipated being good at Strongman. Um, when we were in Australia and he did those few competitions, he was really good, but I think both of us were like, it's just like New South Wales, Australia, like sure he's really good at it, but you know, it's not gonna be a thing. And I always find it funny to think that if he didn't get invited to World's Strongest Man, he would not be doing Strongman at all, like full stop. Mitchell is a type of person where sometimes he has to slow down a little bit. It's kind of like zero to 100 really quick and you kind of wish he'd go 75 for a little bit. Um, but in terms of his actual goals and aspirations, that's one of the things I find really admirable about Mitchell is that he's always you know, he's focused on what I want to do for our family and I want to do for the greater good and, you know, what I want to do for all of Strongman. So it's never, I want to win a competition for me. It's I want to win a competition to have more of a following, to better support our family, better support as a videographer, <laughs> better support everyone. Uh, and that sort of follows in all tracks of life. He definitely struggles and it's long days, but he loves all of it, which is important. I think if you had a job that you didn't like at all, and that being said, like there's obviously negative points of every job, um, I think that he wouldn't be able to cope, like he wouldn't be able to get up in the morning. But the fact that he knows the big picture, he knows why he's doing it, it makes like those, you know, 16 hour day he had yesterday worth it. How would you describe your rise in strongman in like the fewest words possible? Hard to believe. Do you know, I think people who are fans of the sport, they think it's hard to believe. And all I can say to that is imagine being me. I didn't know that I could do this. And I think that's really the interest of doing any of it is you just find out what you're capable of. And to find out you're capable of more and more and more than you ever thought you could do is that's the most important bit to me. Whether that takes me to the top of the world or that takes me to third at a local show, that was my objective to begin with. And it really still is the objective. You keep getting better and you never know where it takes you, but the whole thing's pretty hard to believe. More generally, I think that's born from no one ever telling me that I couldn't do anything. I think if I told my mom I was going to Mars when I was when I was 15 years old, she probably would have thought it could happen. And no matter what I say I could do, whether I do it or not, people seem to forget if I don't do something. They all seem to remember you do everything you say you can do. And I say a lot of things I think I can do that don't happen. And in strongman, it just seems to have perpetually happened. But my lack of fear 
in being wrong is probably the bit that requires the most confidence. That if I put myself out there, I say I can do something and I can't do it, and I say that in front of a lot of people, then that's a pill to swallow, but it's also one of the most valuable lessons you could learn. If I have a great strongman career, it might last five years, 10 years, but learning life lessons that make you a better human being, that's invaluable. And I think taking advantage of every single one of those possible is of utmost importance to me. I think it's, it's less of an intention and more of a, an outcome because I, I firmly believe I'm a human first and I'm a person first and I want to improve myself as a person more than I want to improve myself as a strongman. And I'm not sure a lot of people have thought that way in the past. And I'm on camera enough that the only thing I can do is come across genuine and, and who I am. But I think the special bit is that people can see that just with consistent effort and nothing crazy each day, just reasonable, consistent effort, you can take your body to a pretty special place. Strongman's the ultimate want. Like, I want to be the strongest man in the world, but I don't need to be. And no part of me feels that I need to be, but I'm gonna work my ass off to try to get there because that's an amazing title to hold, because it's an amazing physical accomplishment, and because that propels you to be able to do with your life whatever you'd like, so long as you see that as a stepping stone. And that's because we shouldn't be most afraid of never reaching our goals. We should be most afraid of accomplishing all of our goals, which is why the, the end never exists. Because if you accomplish all your goals, what are you doing? Why do you get up tomorrow? And the answer is you don't, because there's no reason. Get your legs all the way straight and then reach out there. I'm not looking to take someone from uh, on the couch eating potato chips to marathon runner. I'm hoping to take someone on the couch eating potato chips to walking down the street. Or maybe someone who's disenchanted with the gym, a new source of inspiration for why they can get out there and understanding, okay, this is how I can improve. This is what I can do. This is how I should train. This is how I could eat. And it, the outcome is simply a byproduct of that. And you are in control of that. So that's why strongman in and of itself is not important, but the impact in which you can make in the sport that carries over to public health is very important. So what is the main goal of the long death event? Well, this is location one, and location one will not be the end of what we're doing. Uh, the goal is to be able to get this to every Canadian, uh, every person in Canada who needs an option to, to exercise under guided care uh, and be able to take all those people with a unique situation who, who have nowhere to go right now. And right now there's millions, millions of people who need to improve their long-term health and they have nowhere to go do that. They, they'll be tell, told by their doctors that they need to go walk or they should go exercise. And to someone uneducated, that just, it leaves more questions than answers. And so we want to be the people who provide those answers. The thing about that is an individual day doesn't look particularly impressive, but you add the efforts of any particular day and it's the principle of compound interest. If you can just do two or three percent more than you did the day before, and two or three percent more over time, that leaves you in a very different spot than you started. And succeeding in every facet of life is really the same. It's consistent effort. It's really just good enough every day. You don't have to be a rock star ever. And there's many days where I don't feel like a rock star. And there's a lot of days where I would really, really love to sleep in. But there's people counting on you. There's a, there's a purpose to live your life and there's something more that you have to accomplish than just lying in bed. And it's a misnomer that successful people want to go out and be successful. Of course, there's an innate drive, but every successful person I've talked to, we would rather sit in bed. We would rather sleep in. We would rather not do the things we're doing, but there's just a need. It's not even a want, it's just a need.
Mitchell, where do you want to sit? Let's, I want to hear the most nerve-wracking moments. This is off, off topic. <laughs> What's the most nerve-wracking of the year? There's always going to be a level of nervousness because we are arguably the people that are closest to you. So we're seeing all of the hard work that you're putting in. And to have something go wrong when we know you could potentially be better in an event, mm. that's the nerve-wracking part. Mm. Mine was when you hit seventh at Rogue. And I was just so <laughs> upset for you yeah. because I, you see it with, with other people competing when they miss, but they're like a half a fraction of a second difference and then they've dropped points. And I looked at all of yours and I was like, oh my gosh, you dropped points and things that you'd be really good at and you even came first in this event, but you're still sitting at seven. Mm. And it just like the expectation of you at the Rogue prior to the Rogue was so high. And then that is the lowest you'd ever been since you were in Worlds. Actually, just like... in a competition, that's the lowest I've ever been, ever. Because yeah. Worlds, I I was fifth and then fell to eight in the yeah. last event. True. That's the lowest I've ever actually existed. And I'm most nervous about the number of people who came out to support me. And like you're in the bottom third and people have flown like three hours to come watch you. It'd be absolute shit. That's the pressure that I feel. It's funny. And it's it's a it's it's a funny um, like I feel bad for you and you feel bad for me. There's yeah. actually no one with an origination of bad feeling towards yeah. any of it. Because you know we don't care. And like any sport you've ever done, I'm always looking at you your care. face after. Like you care. I don't care. Yeah. I'm you like, do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Body I wouldn't think you don't care. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> It's so I funny. am very oh. just strong man right now. <laughs> <laughs> Understatement of the year. Yeah. Can I ask you something? Like, why do some people think that you're, if people either say you're really humble or you're really arrogant. And um, what do you think is, is that line? Well, I think some people don't like confident people and sort of a subset. But I think, I think arrogance is confidence without the admission of potential failure. And if you just say, I'm going to win, and I'm going to win this, and I'm going to win this, and I could do this, and I could do this, I think that's arrogant. But I think if you back it up with, could do this, I think it'll run this way. I think if a thousand times over, I could come in this spot, lots of stuff could happen, such and such could come in in great shape. I think that's fine. Um, but I don't think in general people like, I'm going to win. I think I'm going to win. I think I'm going to be top three. Because I've never really said I think I'm going to be bad, and I never have been, but the day will come. But I think that's it. I don't even think you, you know what you can do, so you know what your max lifts are. So going into an event, there shouldn't be a lot of surprises. Not necessarily, but you can also mess something up or slightly yeah, like perform, or you know, like dumbbell is a big variable. You could have a perfect day and do really well. You could have a terrible day and it's just not there. Because in the end. You just gotta do the thing, and that's it. <laughs> Before every competition, we've sat down and we've discussed expectations, kind of what we were going over and everything. One thing that we never really talked about <laughs> was when you think that you would have won World's Strongest Man and eight months ago when you and I started filming together, when do you think? What do you think you would have said eight months ago would have been the deadline that you would have won World's Strongest Man? Oh, wow. I, I don't think, I, I think I would have said I, I don't think I'll ever win it. Really? I don't think so, yeah. Yeah, I think at the time I would have been too far behind in a couple of events to think that I had a reasonable shot. I uh, say, max dumbbell was 100 kilos at the time, and now it's about 130. Um, my max log at the time was 185, and now it's over 200. My uh, my deadlift was good, uh, but I think, yeah, just I, I don't think I would have had that confidence. And to be fair, I wouldn't have had much evidence to say that I thought that that was a possibility. Because when you and I started this whole thing, the filming, it was 
rode to 505 with the intent to break the deadlift full record. Yeah. Were you full of shit? Or did you actually think it was possible? No. Uh, I th logically, I thought it was possible. But how training went, no. It, it was pretty obvious that it wasn't going to happen. Uh, but, you know, I think... I, do, I still do think it's possible for me. It's just at the point of my career now, dedicating substantial time to that probably doesn't make a lot of sense. And maybe one day it will. But it was, you know, you, you got to... You got to put yourself out there and you got to uh, aim high. And we just had a conversation with everyone and they just talk about how I do everything I say I'm going to do. Like, people just seem to forget all the things that you think you're going to do that you don't. So long as you accomplish things in the meantime. I pulled up this video. I think it was the fourth video that you and I shot. It was down here on the pool table. Your mom was showing me pretty much all your trophies and everything from when you were a kid. And at the end, I just want you to watch this because the earlier question when I th said when you think that you're going to win World's Strongest Man. What do we got here? What's and then just, it's just sort of a bit of irony when I went, my husband and I went to Greece um, when Mitchell was probably grade 12, brought this uh, atlas thing back because I thought it was really cool, the, the typical Greek atlas, and now it's World's Strongest Man. There we go. So there we we'll go. We'll have to add the real one to the collection, maybe. Maybe. I'll definitely have one color of it one day. Yes, you will. Put in the comments when you think about when we're <laughs> So, two things. Yeah. One, we should definitely post that, but you could even hear in your demeanor and yeah. what you were saying, <clears throat> it, it didn't even seem like it was that close or that like that yeah. reachable at yeah. that time. Yeah, it wouldn't have felt that way. That's pretty accurate to what, how I thought I would have felt. I mean, I might have a color of that one day. I might be on the podium one day. And uh, now it's, I think it's a, a pretty reasonable possibility that there's one color of that in a couple of months' time. We can take this outside.